Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. At this hour, flight controllers are working in concert with Russian counterparts half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov outside Moscow, watching uh, the approaching uh, impending rendezvous and docking of the unpiloted ISS Progress 85 cargo ship that was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on Tuesday night. At this hour, Progress, all of its systems in great shape, closing in for its uh, automatic link up to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, now within 10 kilometers of its destination for its link up that is scheduled at 10.50 p.m. Central Time, 11.50 p.m. Eastern Time, to complete a two-day, 34-orbit journey from the launch pad at Baikonur. You are looking at a live view from a balcony camera at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Everything has gone uh, perfectly with all of the rendezvous burns for the pilot, uh, the unpiloted Progress uh, resupply ship that is carrying 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 69 crew on board the International Space Station. While Progress is closing in for its docking to the International Space Station just about 48 and a half minutes from now, down at the, case, uh, at the Kennedy Space Center on launch pad 39A, you're looking at the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which was to have launched four hours after the Progress docking this evening. However, mission managers met uh, within the last couple of hours to review a couple of open items uh, just nothing significant, but a couple of technical items that required a bit more analysis and thus determined that one more day would do no harm. And resulting uh, from that meeting was a decision to postpone the launch for 24 hours uh, of the Crew 7 crew that will ride on the uh, Dragon spacecraft uh, to the International Space Station. The Crew 7 crew, led by its commander, Jasmine Mogbelli of NASA, along with pilot. Andy Mogensen of the European Space Agency, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Barasov will have one more day to prepare for their launch, which is now scheduled on Saturday morning at 2.27 a.m. Central Time, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. The launch once again postponed for 24 hours to allow mission managers to close out a couple of items and uh, to uh, resolve uh, just one minor technical issue with uh, one piece of open paperwork uh, that will get resolved within the next 24 hours, permitting a launch. Our launch coverage now will start not this evening, but rather tomorrow night, Friday night, August 25th, at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, leading up to a launch of the Dragon spacecraft and the Crew-7 crew on Saturday morning at 2.27 a.m. Central Time, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. A launch on Saturday morning will uh, result in a docking to the International Space Station by the Dragon spacecraft on Sunday morning, August 27th, at 7.50, 7.50 a.m. Central Time, 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time, that will be followed by hatch opening uh, within the uh, two hour time frame after docking is completed and uh, welcoming remarks by the crew. The docking, hatch opening and welcoming now scheduled for Sunday, August 27th. You're looking at uh, the view from an external crosshair engineering camera on the Progress 85 cargo ship as it closes in on the International Space Station. You can see in the lower left-hand corner the values uh, on your screen showing that the Progress is now about seven and a half kilometers away from the station, closing at a rate of about 10 and a half meters per second. That uh, closure rate uh, will continue to reduce as the progress approaches the vicinity of the International Space Station. We'll conduct a 91 degree fly around of the station and uh, then we'll be given uh, permission to put the brakes on basically for a short period of station keeping uh, before uh, it resumes its final approach and a very slow closure for a docking at a uh, rate of about one-tenth of a meter per second 
The docking of the progress to the aft port of the Zvezda service module scheduled at 10.50 p.m. Central Time, 11.50 p.m. Eastern Time. The automatic approach, uh, you can pre prepare the command uh, to activate Toro and also uh, the reverse at 6.15, we can start. Earlier today, uh, one more uh, technical item uh, of note, uh, the uh, service module engines on the International Space Station fired for 21 and a half seconds at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time in a predetermined uh, debris avoidance maneuver uh, that was coordinated between uh, NASA and Roscosmos ballistics specialists that was designed uh, to provide an extra margin of distance from uh, what had been evaluated as a fragment of debris that uh, had uh, that uh, debris avoidance maneuver not been conducted could have passed within about five statute miles of the station later this evening. So that debris avoidance maneuver, which basically had the effect of lowering the station's orbit by about three-tenths of a mile, uh, had no impact on tonight's docking, would have had no impact on uh, the launch of Crew 7 had it occurred tomorrow morning, and has had no impact on other station operations. Once uh, the docking uh, occurs, there will be a period of just a couple of minutes to allow the relative motion uh, between uh, the Progress vehicle and uh, the International Space Station uh, to dampen out uh, on the uh, docking interface between the two spacecraft. Once that occurs, then the uh, forward docking probe on the Progress will retract to form a hard mate uh, between the Progress and the station. There will be a period of leak checks to make sure we have an airtight seal uh, between Progress and the station before the cosmonauts on the station in the early morning hours of Friday morning open up the hatch to Progress and begin to unload uh, its cache of food, fuel, and supplies from the vehicle. Range six, uh, negative nine. Uh, we have uh, the signal acquisition. Progress began its journey off the launch pad six, site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on Tuesday night, uh, U.S. time, with a launch at uh, 8.08 .08 p.m. Central Time, which was 6.08 a.m. Baikonur time on Wednesday morning. Uh, the launch occurred about uh, 12 minutes after sunrise uh, into a cloudless sky. The uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster arced out to the northeast off of the launch pad in Baikonur uh, to an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Eight minutes and 49 seconds after launch, uh, the uh, Progress spacecraft separated from the third stage, the upper stage of the Soyuz booster unfurled its solar arrays and navigational antennas and began its two-day chase to catch up to the International Space Station that uh, all things uh, being equal will culminate with a docking about 41 and a half minutes from now. On board the International Space Station, uh, the uh, cosmonauts are uh, awake at this hour. Uh, Sergei Prokopiev, the station commander on the far right of your screen in this Expedition 69 crew portrait, along with Andrei Fedyaev, uh, who is second from the right, uh, and uh, Dmitry Patelin, who is uh, second from the left in this crew portrait, they are awake uh, monitoring the approach of the progress for its link up to the International Space Station. Uh, Prokopiev and Patelin will be at the controls of the TORU, the telerobotic uh, telerobotically operated rendezvous system. It's basically a joystick system in the Zvezda service module, ready to take over manual control of the flying of the progress in the unlikely event that a failure would occur with the CORE's automated rendezvous system. The uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system has locked on to a comparable uh, system on the International Space Station, providing uh, the guidance uh, that the Progress needs uh, to uh, calibrate its rate of closure 
and uh, the distance between Progress and the aft port of the Zvezda service module, which will be the port of call for docking that's coming up a short time from now. The Progress now about four and a half kilometers away from the station, closing at a rate of about eight and a half meters per second, all of its systems in excellent shape. The International Space Station uh, and the seven crew members on board comprising the Expedition 69 crew, soon to expand its numbers to 11 once the Crew 7 crew arrives on board, now scheduled for Sunday morning. The station is flying 260 miles above the Earth, moving from northwest to southeast, flying just to the south of Shanghai, China. Once again, the, the progress is loaded with 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the crew members on board the station, the latest in the chain of supply ships uh, flying to the International Space Station. Uh, once again, let's note uh, for our viewers and listeners that uh, the launch of the Crew 7 crew on a Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket from Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center that had been scheduled for the wee hours of Friday morning has been postponed for 24 hours to allow mission managers to close out some open paperwork on preparation uh, for the vehicle to uh, be launched and arrive at the International Space Station. There's uh, the view on launch pad 39A of the Falcon 9 rocket. The launch again scrubbed this evening for 24 hours. Uh, the NASA TV coverage of the Crew 7 launch now will begin on Friday night. That's uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, at uh, 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, culminating with a launch at 2.27 a.m. Central Time on Saturday morning, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. That will put uh, the Crew 7 crew on almost a 30-hour phasing uh, trajectory to reach the station on Sunday morning with docking to the forward port, or rather the zenith port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station on Sunday, docking scheduled now at 7.50, 7.50 a.m. Central Time, 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday morning, August 27th. This will have the net effect of pushing back the departure of the Crew 6 crew uh, from September 1st to September 2nd. All of that uh, will be further uh, evaluated once we get Crew 7 docked and on board the International Space Station to begin their planned six-month mission. Between now and docking time, there will be a series of so-called impulse burns from uh, the engine on uh, the Progress vehicle, very short bursts, uh, essentially mid-course correction burns of the Progress to further fine-tune its path to the International Space Station. And once again, uh, there will be a fly-around of the station. The fly-around is scheduled uh, to begin at about 10.25 p.m. Central Time. It will... Uh, entail an angle of fly around of about 91.7 degrees to precisely align uh, the forward docking probe on the progress with the aft port of the Zvezda service module. There will be a brief, very brief period of station keeping to allow Russian uh, flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow to analyze uh, the uh, angle of the progress and its alignment with the aft port of Zvezda before the command is given for final approach for the unpiloted progress craft.
we have lost the signal. Copy. We have SCAD activation. Uh, the burn is being executed. Copy. Burn uh, reverse maneuver. Copy. The uh, visiting vehicle officer here in uh, Mission Control, Tom Erkenswick, reports uh, that the Impulse 4 burn has been completed, the latest in that series of mid-course correction maneuvers. And there's a view from external cameras on the International Space Station of the progress as it uh, begins to close in uh, to about uh, two kilometers away from the station in the uh, terminal phase of its rendezvous. All of the progress systems have been functioning by the book since its launch on Tuesday night U.S. time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Copy. We have signal acquisition. We are sending by for your go to activate uh, Toro. Uh, go ahead and Activate Toro. Sending the command to activate Toro. The command to activate Toro is uh, activation is confirmed. Uh, you can start uh, working for page 21, item for decimal two. Okay, I am activating the network and all the push buttons are released. The network is activated. The power for the head controllers is on. Okay, copy. Uh, we sent UBS initial. We have two LEDs. Uh, we have internal and external LEDs on. Copy. We have prepared the hand controllers. I am testing the rule test. So go ahead and execute the test. You're hearing uh, the voice of the interpreter uh, relaying uh, the information from Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev, who is inside the Zvezda service module. He's uh, conducting a uh, final test of the telerobotically operated rendezvous system. That's the backup rendezvous system that he would uh, be using in the unlikely event that the core's automated rendezvous system on progress would encounter a problem, uh, rendering it uh, unavailable. So far, the core system is rock solid, locked on, everything in good shape. As you uh, look now at uh, the view from the engineering crosshaired camera on the uh, outside of the progress craft, which is just uh, over one kilometer away from its destination at the aft port of the Zvezda service module. It is closing at a rate of about three meters per second, all of the progress systems operating normally. Uh, breaking retrograde burn. Uh, external, internal, neutral. We have performed a uh, test of... The uh, progress and the International Space Station flying 260 miles to the northeast of Indonesia at this hour. With the initial two LEDs are on. Uh, two external, two internal are eliminated. I am ready to perform the uh, test for item 4.3. Starting. OPS initial, internal, external are on. I activated the operation external and internal are on. I am activating AGC mode. Inaudible. Pressing for the first time. I see the marker. The Impulse 5 burn uh, is underway. Once again, the latest in the series of mid-course correction maneuvers by the unpiloted progress craft. 
that is uh, some 30 minutes away from docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module. Um, the indicators again. Internal AGC LEDs. Progress now about 880 meters away from the station. External and internal indicators are eliminated. For those uh, of you just tuning in, uh, there will be uh, no coverage tonight of a Crew 7 launch from the uh, Kennedy Space Center. That launch was postponed for 24 hours by mission managers to afford them uh, a bit more time to close out uh, open paperwork on a uh, technical item that uh, should be completed within the uh, next 24 hours, permitting a launch of the Crew 7 crew, NASA's Jasmine Mogbelli, ESA's Andy Mogensen, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's Satoshi Furukawa and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov. They are now scheduled to launch on Saturday morning at 2.27 a.m. Central Time, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. NASA TV coverage of launch now will begin on Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Central, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Here in Mission Control in Houston, Flight Director Elias Mirmo pulled uh, his team of flight controllers, gave uh, a go for docking. The Russian uh, Mission Control team in Korolyov outside of Moscow, uh, taking a look at the data. Everything is in good shape with the progress, closing in on the 600 meter mark away from its destination at the aft port of Zvezda. Range is uh, 600. Our range rate is negative 164. Copy. Range is uh, 500 and rate is one negative one decimal five. Copy. Progress in the International Space Station flying uh, just off the northeast coast of Australia as uh, the two vehicles move from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Progress now less than 500 meters away from docking, which is scheduled about 26 minutes from now. At the time, 6 at 24, uh, starting the fly around. And progress has now uh, initiated its fly around of the International Space Station. This is about a 91 degree fly around uh, to precisely align its forward docking probe with the aft port of the Zvezda service module. Once the fly around is completed, 
Uh, progress will put the brakes on at a range of about 195 meters for a few uh, seconds or so of station keeping to allow Russian flight controllers to evaluate its alignment uh, between uh, the forward docking probe and uh, the aft port of the service module. Once that's complete, uh, the command will be given to reinitiate final approach for docking. We have built the plane for the fly around. Inaudible. Copy. Progress's uh, automated fly around of the International Space Station continues in fine shape. No issues uh, with the Progress systems, as has been the case since its launch on Tuesday night U.S. time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Uh, 46, we're going to start eclipse and the um, headlight is on. Copy. We're, uh, please monitor the activation of the um, headlight uh, per the telemetry and visual as well. Copy. 646, uh, start eclipse. Range is 240, uh, range 240 is meters now separating uh, progress from the station, continuing its fly around. Uh, the Zvezda service module is in the upper left-hand corner of your screen in this engineering view from the progress camera. That large antenna at the aft port of the service module is the Lyra antenna, which provides a high data rate uh, telemetry and television from the Russian segment of the International Space Station. We are about halfway through Progress's fly around of the station. Again, a 91 degree fly around to precisely align the forward docking probe on Progress with the aft port of the Zvezda service module.
range is 218 meters. The range rate is negative 0 0.15. We see the docking port. Copy. Progress about to wrap up its fly around 120 meters away from the station. The uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system on the Progress and on the station, they're locked on to one another, providing uh, navigational data for the unpiloted craft during the terminal phase of its rendezvous. Range is 189, copy. Uh, range is 198. Sergey, on page two, um, so try to get uh, the um, go. We're currently on the axis of the um, docking port, and we're performing um, the maneuver, the pitch maneuver. Uh, or, or we're performing the roll maneuver. We are currently performing, continuing the um, maneuver. The range is 198. One, uh, range is 190. Copy. Progress is now uh, doing a pre-planned uh, maneuver that will orient uh, its solar rays in the uh, correct angle for final approach for docking. You can see the thruster firings from the unpiloted craft basically slowing the progress down for a, a brief period of station keeping. Sergey, we have a go to send the command F44. Copy. Time is 3.34.22. Uh, Turning on BPS in the initial configuration. We have internal and external on. The time is 3.34.35. I have sent from the... Uh, display. We see the approach. Copy. Next uh, work for page 23, monitoring the automatic approach. Uh, we have 11 and a half minutes until eclipse. Right is zero point negative zero point eight inaudible. Uh, we lost uh, video momentarily. Copying. This is Mission Control Houston, a uh, good view of the unpiloted Progress 85 cargo ship.
which is uh, just about 100 uh, plus meters away from its docking port at the aft end of the Zvezda service module. We're about uh, 14 and a half minutes away from uh, physical contact of the progress. Once docking occurs, the uh, progress and space station docking interfaces will have an, an opportunity to dampen out against one another to enable uh, the docking probe to retract, forming a hard mate between the two vehicles. There'll be a, a period of leak checks over about an hour and a half to two hour period. And then in the wee hours of Friday morning, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin will open up the hatch to progress and begin to unload its uh, volume of supplies, 2.7 tons of supplies, food, fuel, and dry goods, for the Expedition 69 crew. Range rate is 0 0.58. Hopping. And with almost uh, no station keeping required, the progress is now slowly closing in for its link up. Does the um, alignment match visually? Eating measured with the um, uh, ruler, it's 80, it does match, copy. Progress in the station flying over Auckland, New Zealand at an altitude of 260 miles. The progress uh, inching ever so close to its uh, port of call at the aft port of the Zvezda service module. Copy. Sixty meters now separating progress from Zvezda, closing at a rate of two tenths of a meter per second. The Zvezda service module launched in July of 2000 on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Uh, the measured this uh, the measured range matches the uh, visual range. The range is uh, five zero. Range rate. It's to the left uh, by half a. No. Okay. Copy. Uh, sending by for the readiness. of the readiness message. Three thirty-nine thirty is the time. We have the SSFK uh, readiness at range of uh, three. The forward docking probe has been extended on progress 49 meters away from docking. All of its systems in good shape. This is all uh, an automatic approach for link up to the International Space Station, providing uh, supplies for the Expedition 69 crew, which has been on board for several months, and soon to be joined by the Crew-7 crew now scheduled for launch on Saturday morning from the Kennedy Space Center.
Uh, visually, the range is about 35 meters. That's all. An audible copy. Progress and the station moving into an orbital sunset over the South Pacific. Just about uh, 30 meters separating Progress from its docking port. Internal, external uh, LEDs. Internal, external LEDs are eliminated. We see the rate of closure now down to one tenth of a meter per second. That will be the rate of closure at the time of contact and capture the automatic final approach. Uh, expect uh, the 20 uh, meter range signal. That's going to be a repeat check of the readiness. And work uh, per page 24. Copying. Inaudible. All of the data being received uh, from the Progress to the International Space Station and vice versa for the Progress navigation systems all lining up nicely through the CORE's automated rendezvous system. Twenty-five meters now from docking. We have the message owl um, is deflected, popping at 6.42 for page 24, operate uh, uh, for page 24. 20 meters now separating uh, the two vehicles, which are moving in close proximity to one another at a speed of about five miles a second. Range visually is about 15 meters. Copy. You see the uh, crosshair docking target at the bottom of the docking port of these VESDA service module, now 15 meters separating the two. Range is 10. Now 10 meters. Inaudible target. There is a shadow overlapping uh, with the target a little bit. Inaudible comments. Copy. About four meters. Range is about three meters. Three meters now, contact. standing by for contact and capture. The target is in the center. The crosshairs are aligned. Range is about two meters. Expecting contact. We have contact. We have contact. Docking confirmed. We have capture at 10.45 p.m. Central Time, 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time, 
as the International Space Station in Progress 85 flew 260 miles over the South Pacific. A standby for a flawless rendezvous and a flawless two-day journey from the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies have arrived at the International Space Station. Okay, thank you, Andre. Standing by. Once again, uh, Progress 85 has docked to the International Space Station. Docking occurred at 10.45 p.m. Central Time, 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time, as the space station and Progress flew 260 miles over the South Pacific. We'll now wait uh, for the forward docking probe to retract to form a hard mate between the two vehicles and for the hooks to close on the Progress. The uh, forward docking probe is in the process of retracting. On Space Ground 1, about video recording. Go ahead, Mitri, on Space Ground 1. Should I stop the recording at this time? Yes, that is correct. The uh, docking probe has retracted and hooks are now driving. And we have a confirmation that the hooks are now closed. Progress is hard-mated to the International Space Station to complete a problem-free, flawless 
two-day journey from the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, arriving at the station and docking at 10.45 p.m. Central Time, 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time, to complete its 34-orbit journey, delivering 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the crew members on board the station. The crew complement on board the station will expand uh, within the next 48 hours from seven to 11 crew members. Earlier this evening, uh, as you look at a live view of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on the launch pad, launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, mission managers met and uh, elected to postpone the launch of the Crew 7 crew for 24 hours to provide just a bit more time to close out some open paperwork that will be completed within the next 24 hours, leading to a launch early Saturday morning, August 26th, at 2.27 a.m. Central Time, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. Our launch coverage on NASA TV will begin on Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, leading to the launch of the Crew-7 crew, NASA's Jasmine Mogbelli, who's the commander, Andy Mogensen of the European Space Agency, Satoshi Furukawa of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov. They're all set to go. Their ride uh, to the International Space Station is awaiting with the launch scheduled now for Saturday morning at 2.27 a.m. Central, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time that will culminate with a docking to the zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station on Sunday morning, August 27th at 7.50 a.m. Central Time, 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be providing a continuous coverage of the journey of the Crew-7 crew to the International Space Station Again, beginning with our launch coverage on Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Central, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. With that, we'll wrap up our coverage for tonight, Progress 85, a smooth and uh, uneventful docking to the International Space Station to complete its journey from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We'll see you back on Friday night with launch coverage for the Crew-7 crew. In the meantime, this is Mission Control Houston.